Good morning, welcome to the workshop. My name is William, and in this video, we're going to be machining what I think will probably be my first set of precision parts. And that might sound strange because I have machined quite a few parts in the last year or so that I've had the workshop, but I've mostly been doing them up to scribe lines or by eye using calipers, that kind of thing. And I want to get a much higher level of precision. Now, the actual things I'm making in this video are horn stays, which keep the axle boxes from falling out of the horns when you lift the locomotive up. They don't need to be precision parts, but I really want practice because as this locomotive build progresses, there's going to be an ever increasing need for accuracy on components. So let's get started. This is the setup I'm using to mill the ends of the horn stays square. Uh, for once, I'm just going to get a square edge with nothing in it, it's just clamped here. Uh, and then when I've done that on all of them, I will use a, uh, a stop like this one here, and, and I'll get it up against here, and then I'll be able to mill them all to exactly the same size. As you can see, this isn't the ideal filming location. Where the camera was before is where I stand. And uh, here you can basically see nothing. But I have got a link for a couple of camera arms suggested by Matt Shivers. Thank you, Matt. I'm still repping your official outfit. And also from uh, Benedict at my local model engineering club, who has suggested uh, that he has a solution too. So hopefully better camera views imminently. With this part here at uh, 2.250 inches, I put the stop in place and I've got that, that locked in. I've replaced it with another part and now I'm going to mill across that way. And it might be a bit of a deep cut, uh, but I think my mill can handle it. And then that way I'll end up with four identical parts. I can keep taking them out, put the next one in. As long as I'm using the milled side I just did against here, uh, I'm confident that it should be very repeatable and this will be a great setup for drilling as well. These are now all to size. Um, I just need to mark on the positions of the bolts to go in the horns which I will use this set to a quarter inch um, and then I will mark up the holes for the axle box uh, spring pins. Um, however I am going to use an edge finder uh, because I have that repeatable setup so I'll be able to come in another back and work across the offset to here and then go in and work out exactly that quarter inch in and quarter inch across. And then I can repeat that on all four. I can turn it upside down, back to front, and drill the other ones. Um, so actually, I, I will be using these just for reference, which is apparently what you're meant to use marking out lines for. Uh, <laughs> who would have thought? So I think I'm finally getting the hang of this. So I have the stop here and the piece here. This is what I use to mill the edges, as you saw. Um, but also now, if I bring this down, well, it's probably appreciate it's probably quite hard to see. Um, it's bang on where it needs to be. And I use that with edge finders. Oops. I use that with uh, edge finders. So we have a, a disc finder here and a, a larger edge finder here and, and dialed it in. If there's any interest for me showing how I'm dialing in these parts, uh, please let me know because when I got into machining, it was obviously when YouTube was already a thing and it seemed that everyone and their mother had a DRO and everyone would just simply, ah, oh, we get the edge and we zero the DRO and we move across and there's exactly, there's our hole. Um, when you're using a manual machine with no DRO, uh, then you need to account for backlash and you need to do certain order of operations. So if there's any interest in that, I'm very happy to, to do a short video on how I am personally dialing in things. I mean, it'd be great to get some feedback as well. Um, but anyway, that's that. I'm now going to do a bunch of drilling. I'll time lapse you over there. And uh, hopefully at the end of this, we should have at least the uh, horn stay fixing holes done. Flush with this success, the next thing to do is drill the holes for the uh, spring pins that involves moving the well moving the table towards me i guess the sixteenth of an inch and then across nine sixteenths which we'll put it over here somewhere and then just drilling two more holes in each in exactly the same way you've seen so i'm not going to show that i'll come back to you when they're done so there we go these are probably my first precision parts 
And I don't mean that because I took my time with them, but I mean that I used mechanical edge finding and the dials exclusively in their production. Um, from the overall length to the position of the screw holes, uh, using that uh, stop to get these in here. So these actually, although you won't be able to see it very easily on camera, they perfectly line up in every axis. Um, I'm so pleased with that. And uh, yeah, maybe I can do this. Who knows? <laughs>